Hey everybody, I'm Brian Fuller and this is Mark Presser. We're here, we're gonna talk about True Molly. No, seriously, we are here. We're uh, glad you clicked on the video. We're gonna give you a, a few tips on chromoly welding. And there are a lot of misconceptions out there. There are uh, a lot of ways to do it and not do it. It is a pretty simple material. It's used a lot on race cars, motorcycles, anywhere you wanna get high strength and low weight. Yeah, and, and the biggest thing with chrome molly is everybody thinks it's lighter than steel, but it's not really lighter than steel. It's not lighter than steel, Mark Presser? It's stronger than steel, so they can use less of it and get the same strength. But, but. there's also some things that we have to follow when we're trying to weld chrome molly. Well, let's start with a little bit of safety. Obviously, you don't want to burn your hands. You don't want to burn your eyes. Get your safety glasses on. Make sure you wear your welding hood. TIG welding is what we're going to do today, right about, uh, we're about 80 to 100 amps is kind of where we're going to fall today. 90 thou material. And a lot of times if you're working at a table with a friend of yours, one of the other things we need to protect ourselves from is the rays. So make sure your coat's buttoned up good. Um, Z87 rated sunglasses, safety glasses. Other than that, I think we're ready to get on it. So. First thing we want to do is uh, we've kind of done your basic, uh, basic coping joint, which would be very common on a motorcycle or a race car. Sure. We've, uh, we did this with a kind of a hand punch or a hand notcher. You can also do them with an end mill. You know, if you're at home in your garage, you can actually do it with a grinder and, you know, just a regular drum sander. My first bicycles, we did that way. So that's another way to do it. Yeah, and cleanliness is real important. You want to get the scale or any dirt any uh, little metal chips that are down inside. You want to brush this stuff up good because, hey, you're just lessening your chances of a great weld when you're, when you're welding over dirt and scale. <laughs> All right, so, uh, and, and chromoly is, is definitely more susceptible to that than steel. You know, mild steel, sometimes you get away with a little bit more of a, a little bit more of a dirty substance, but, you know, in general, welding across the board, the cleaner it's gonna be, the closer you're going to get that alloy to being what the original parent material was. Sure. Um, so one of the misconceptions about chrome molly, and I've heard many people talk about this, and they talk about preheating, postheating. You got to preheat it before you can weld it. So you can get all kinds of information on this stuff and listen to all kinds of opinions on it. We're going to show you right now how you can find out whether it works or not. This is. Um, Typical tubing made for out of a roll cage might be made out of. And uh, the thing about chrome molly is if it's less than a, about an eighth of an inch, 120 thousandths is the magic number, there's no heat treatment necessary. I know there's people out there that are saying right now, you can't do that. You can't do that, Fuller. You better not build that bike out of that stuff and do it that way. I We're going to show you right now. We're going to show you right now. <laughs> all right, so just a couple of tips. Um, yeah, I'm using 16, uh, I'm using 16th rod here. There, there are a couple of different mild steel applications you can use. This one's 70S-6, which is a good material to use. Uh, one of the nice steels, uh, tick rod to go ahead and weld with. Um, one of the things I think is hard is starting and stopping. You know, people go in and they want to weld, but it's hard to figure out, okay, make a nice start and stop, but make it look like it was a nice continuous weld. Sure. Right? Absolutely. So I'm going to just do a little bit of a demonstration here and hopefully we can get you a close up at some point, but I'm going to get the weld started. I'm kind of pulsing a little bit just because that's, you know, that's kind of my technique. Not everybody does it that way. Now I've stopped. I'm leaving the shielding glass gas sitting there. If you're really good, you go ahead and leave your tungsten underneath too and it'll keep it shielded. I'm going to turn around. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to start forward, work my way back without the tongue, without the uh, filler rod. I'm gonna work back to that previous puddle. Then I'm gonna start back at that point. And this is a good way that I know, and I'm gonna try to make it look the way I did before. So we do that, I'm gonna start it back. I'm working back to the puddle, dip it, start another little dip, 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 dip. And it might be hard to get on film, but I think if you can get a close-up of that, you can see that it pretty much looks like you just welded it straight through. Yeah, and with a little bit of practice on that, 
in, in practicing your restarts real well, you can literally go all the way around this thing and only have one start spot on it yeah. instead of a bunch of start spots. Because each time we stop the weld, now we have to make sure that we tie into that spot well to make the good weld. Now another good tip is, I find this a lot with my guys, is when people go to tack, they tack right in the middle of where they're gonna put their weld. Sure. Well now you've got a, you got a perfectly match when you go through there and either don't, don't dot it right at that point, we've already added filler rod, but the better thing to do is, you know, make your uh, tack welds small and make them in a place where you know you're gonna stop. And that makes it to where you can make these nice continuous Absolutely. welds, stop, stop in those points. Another thing with tacking these up is, if you tack both sides, it'll pull apart on the top. Yep. So you kind of jump back and forth, corner to corner, like an X maybe. Yep. Absolutely. So uh, I, I think from there, the other little thing we wanted to talk about was, you know, doing some testing on your own. I'm gonna go ahead and pull my hat because I'm done with that part. But, you know, something else we want to do, this is a little test that we did, and you can see we welded in a bung, and we pulled it. We actually set it up here, and, you know, if you do your weld right, it's going to happen normally 3 sixteenths or so on each side. It should actually rip the parent material apart before it does the weld. Yeah, you can tell this metal right here, this break is right on the edge of the heat affected zone, right where the base metal and the edge of the heat affected zone, and you can see where this thing let loose. What we don't want is we don't obviously want the weld to break. But the important thing is you can see that the elongation of that tube, how hard that pulled. You can see how hard that thing pulled before it let loose. So it's not just a snap. It gives way, it pulls and stretches before it actually lets, lets loose. And you know, find some way to, to see how your welds are doing. I mean, we're doing a simple test here. We're at 1,500 pounds, now, and that's Prosser, a lot. Prosser welded this one, so if it breaks early, what you don't want to do, is though, guy right here. why I'm standing <laughs> here like this is when you're doing this kind of testing, you don't want to stand right over top of this thing. You want to get away from this a little bit. You don't know what's going to happen when it goes. It's going to break. We're trying to break it. We're at 4,500 pounds right 4, now. 4,500 PSI. Uh, still going. We're almost at six. It'll go up to about seven. Nope, it's getting ready right oh, now. Almost seven. Yep, still at 7,000. It's stretching. Oh yeah, you can see it totally pulling. Let's pop it. Let's do it. Oh yeah. Bang. That was a good one. That was a good one. So now I'll let it loose. We can pull that thing up where you can see it. And look at that. Nice. Right next to the well, right where it should be. 8,000 pounds. So that's a lot of beef. That's a lot of weight. I think that would hold, don't you? Well, I'm not sure what you want it to hold, but it's going to hold 8,000 pounds anyway. So anyway. Right next to the well. That was cool. So uh, just to summarize, you know, get out there, get yourself a TIG welder, and uh, it's so much fun. And when you're doing it, just do some testing and try to keep your hands where they are. Be safe. Keep your eyeballs intact. Get a vise and a hammer and put your safety glasses on. <laughs> Start whacking. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Thanks.